Hello, this is John Ashworth, the fitness nomad. My new book is out next month, Weight Loss, the job no one is training you for. You can pre-order your copy today at fitnessnomadwisdom.com. Here's a short section from the book. The other night, my daughter Anna asked me, is there such a thing as perfect? Then a few nights ago, she lifted her shirt at the dinner table and asked me a different question. Am I fat? Anna is eight, a second grader. Recently, it seems to be the topic of choice at the dinner table, fatness. And finally, the other night, I asked that we put a stop to it. Too much talk about fatness, I said. Isn't there something more interesting we can discuss? Of course, part of it could be my fault. I'm a fitness guy and very often spend time around the dinner table prophesying about what we need to do to solve the problem I see firsthand everywhere I look. In fact, one image that stands out in my mind is seeing so many of the dads I see at honest soccer games, dutifully moving around the soccer field in an attempt to keep the second graders on the ball during the game. I'm disturbed by how much belly fat I see hanging around under t-shirts and no longer hidden so well underneath dress clothes. While it's true we are all getting too fat, there is another problem brewing under the surface like a geyser. And once in a while that geyser gushes forth and douses us in a hot and sobering bath. All this focus on fatness, it turns out, can also make us quite self-conscious, confused, and ultimately sick with skinniness. Here in Madison, NBC 15 news anchor Lee Mills produced a story in 2011 that showed us firsthand how the problem of obesity can move 180 degrees in the opposite direction. In short, her story was that of a young girl who almost killed herself with an overemphasis on being skinny. Please don't mistake my intent here. Overweightness is not off the hook. If you're too heavy, you certainly should be doing something about it because if you're not, well, your consequences are coming. What I'm here to discuss instead is the vital importance of finding balance in our pursuit of health, fitness, weight loss, and a body image we can sleep with at night. In my humble and professional opinion, I think we miss an important opportunity every day to educate our children about the importance of a good, wholesome, well-rounded pursuit of a more healthful lifestyle. We feed them garbage in the school lunch program, take away recess when we want to punish them, play movies and eat sweets in the gymnasium when it rains, and discourage running on the blacktop because it's unsafe. In addition, we hold bake sales and birthday parties and feed them high glycemic food after soccer games, filling their everyday life with the idea that treats and sweets and other unhealthy food choices are acceptable and part of what it means to be a kid. And then we turn around and tell them fat is no good. Well, that's just confusing, even to me. When a young girl is eating no more than a few bites of a cucumber and exercising for hours each day, and no one notices until she's on her deathbed, this is from the story reported on by Lee Mills, you might be quick to say that she is an anomaly a rare occurrence of imbalance that exists in stark contrast to what is normal. I'm not really here today to debate that with you. What I'm here to do today instead is to challenge you, as always. I want to challenge you to reconsider your opportunity, our opportunity, the opportunity we miss every day when we don't sit down with our children for dinner to enjoy a meal that takes us longer than 15 minutes to prepare and probably three times as long to clean up. We have an opportunity every day in the school lunchroom, not just to serve better food, but to also use that time to educate kids about good health beyond their weight. How much do you think you could teach a group of kids if you spent 10 minutes every day at lunch serving them stuff that could actually be considered food and then teaching them what's in it, why it's so good for them, and how to sit down with intention and eat it? 10 minutes a day for 12 or 13 years adds up to a lot, but we miss it, ignore it, and deny its importance. Where's the balance? In a world where we create shows like The Biggest Loser, 
We are also creating the exact opposite extreme in young girls like the one mentioned above. The balance is in education, which is what this book is about. I see it every day with the clients I work with at my fitness studio. They don't know how to eat, exercise, and take good care of themselves. Many of them don't even know how to cook. Yes, we are all aware on some level that we need to work toward better health. And some of, you, some of us even have some basic knowledge about how to do that. But ask someone you know if he or she actually put a meal plan together this week, or if the person knows what's for dinner tonight, and you will get a look with an expression I've seen a thousand times. People will tell you they're too busy, tired, or confused to do the right thing. Some of them will tell you they don't, they don't even care. And if they won't tell you that, they're simply in denial. All of this is easy to ignore until we discover our daughter lying in her hospital bed, fighting for her life, and for no good reason other than the fact that she thought she needed to be skinnier, perfect, or mostly not fat. The time has come for us to take responsibility for what we have all created together. The time has come for us to stop making excuses and to stop pretending that we don't have to do better. Because every day that goes by in our homes, in our schools, at our soccer games, and in the deep and personal crevices of our emotional lives that we don't take the opportunity to live better, be healthier, and find a reasonable balance in our pursuit of health is a day we miss to make a difference, not just for our children, but for all of us, for humankind. I think we can all agree that we have some big problems to solve here, but what are we really doing about it? What's for dinner tonight?